Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hi, I'm Pastor Luther O'Connor here in Dayton, Ohio, and welcome to episode number 6 of Shutdown Devotions. If this is your first time to tune in and you're wondering about the other five episodes, well, you'll find the links on the description above. Also, I'm grateful for the encouraging feedback I've received from many people this past few weeks. Thank you to those who commented in my previous episodes and to those who have sent messages via Messenger to express thanks for this ministry. I also would like to give a special shout out to Tito Junbuya of their Lucky UMC who painted a beautiful painting based on our last meditation on the road to Emmaus. And let me just bring that up quickly on the screen. There you go. Maraming salamat po dito June. And of course, greetings to his wife, Dr. Presi Buya, and their whole family. So for this episode, I want to talk about sheep. For frequently in the Bible, we find humans being compared to sheep. For example, in Mark chapter 6, when Jesus saw the large crowd that followed him, he felt compassion for them and called them a sheep without a shepherd. For it is true, sheep can easily go astray without a shepherd. They require more attention than any other livestock. Why? Because they can't take care of themselves. How come? Well, first, sheep are nearsighted. Uh, that's why they need to stay close to each other. Second, they're very timid. Even a small animal can cause the whole flock to stampede. They have little means of defense, and so their only recourse is to run at the sight of danger. And third, they have no homing instincts. They can't find their way home. You know, uh, dogs, horses, cats, or birds, they have homing instincts. They can find their way home if, if ever they get lost. But sheep are simply not capable of doing that. But in Psalm 23, it's the other way around. We find a description of a sheep in good hands. A sheep that has a shepherd. And King David, the author of the psalm, surely knows what he was talking about because he himself used to be a shepherd. He knew what a sheep is and he definitely knew what a good shepherd does. But even though he was a shepherd, he said in verse 1, The Lord is my shepherd. He essentially described what it means to be a sheep in the presence of the good shepherd. So how did he describe it? First, it is a state or place of utmost satisfaction. In Psalm 23, verses 1 to 3, David said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. Many people never seem to get satisfied, and almost everybody wants more. The world seems to want more. But most of the time, our wanting for more leads us to a cycle of wanting which never can really satisfy. Just take a look at our consumer-based culture. We tend to want more. We want more of this and that. More gadgets, this latest cell phone, this, the latest car, equipment. And it's a cycle that never ends. And where does it lead us? Well, it just leads to more consumption that never satisfies. But clearly, for David, you know, he said he shall not be in want. He is satisfied. Why? Because God is his shepherd. Now, in what ways God satisfies him? What does the good shepherd do for his sheep anyway? Well, first, according to David, he makes me lie down in green pastures. So the good shepherd leads his sheep to a fertile pasture where they have plenty to eat and their stomachs are full. Here then is a picture of a sheep so completely satisfied. 
that there isn't the least bit of desire for anything more. But did you notice the wording here? David said, He makes me lie down. Only the shepherd can make the sheep lie down. So in order for a sheep to lie down, three things need to happen. What are these three things? Well, first first of all, they have to be full. Kailangan busog sila for hungry sheep stay on their feet searching for another mouthful of food. Secondly, they must be unafraid. Kailangan silang hindi takot. For they will not lie down if they're fearful. For the least suspicion of wolves or bears will make them flee. And thirdly, if flies or fleas are bothering them, they won't lie down. They must be comfortable before they lie down. It means that a sheep will never lack in provision at the presence of the Good Shepherd. So friends, God is the only one who can make us lie down in green pastures. Amen? And then David says a second thing. He said, He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. Well, sheep are easily frightened by fast-moving or raging water. They're poor swimmers and they get bogged down with their heavy wool. So, when the shepherd comes to a moving stream, he doesn't try to force the sheep to drink it. Instead, a good shepherd builds a dam and makes a quiet little pool where the sheep can drink from. Church, remember this. God knows our weaknesses. He leads us by still waters. He promises to protect us from the temptations that we can't handle. He never puts us into situations in which we cannot cope. And because of that, still quiet waters, we are refreshed and restored. Yes, there is utmost satisfaction in the presence of the Good Shepherd. But there is another state that happens, and it is this. It is tremendous confidence. Tremendous confidence. For... According to David, on the second part of verse 3 down to verse 4, he said, He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So the good shepherd guides the sheep into right paths. But here's a twist. David also acknowledged a reality that the sheep face, even when it is with the shepherd, that there will be dark valleys. Yes, there will be dark valleys. You know what? If you're a soldier, you don't want to be in a valley. Why? Because you're exposed. It is the weakest position you would want to take. Same thing if you're a sheep. You don't want to be in a valley. Why? Because predators can easily see you. For the valley is a place of vulnerability. It is literally a place of helplessness. And there's nothing much you can do when you're in a valley. So we don't want to be in that place. Why? Because we always want to be in control, isn't it? We want to be in control of our situation. But the reality is that there will be times that we'll find ourselves in valleys. For example, when you're extremely ill or undergoing surgery in the hands of other people, well, that's a valley. You know, you don't have any control about what's happening to you or what's going to happen to you. Well, I remember when I had my first medical scare a few months ago, I found myself in an ambulance being rushed to the hospital here in Dayton. And I was in a very delicate situation. I could have died. It felt like I was in a valley. So when you're struggling with with loneliness, that's a valley too. When you experience a crisis in your relationships, that's a valley. Well, now, while we deal with the ramifications of this pandemic, COVID-19, many of us feel very helpless. You learn that someone you know suddenly contracted COVID-19 and now it becomes more real to you. Before they report the cases, it's all numbers to you. But now, it's personal. And now you're asking, what if I'm next? But not only that, that's why this crisis is so unique. 
We feel different forms and waves of vulnerability and insecurity coming at us at the same time. There's health vulnerability, both physical and emotional. There is relationship vulnerability. Why, since you're constantly with your family at home all the time, of course, you'll experience more tensions in your relationship, particularly with your spouse or, or children. Kasi nga naman, lagi kayong magkasama. Maraming mga issues na matagal na nakatago, no? na biglang lalabas dahil na magkasama kayo. But the biggest of this is financial vulnerability. Since the economy has come to a standstill, you don't know if you're still gonna have a job after this. And so, this valley, it's dark. It's hard to navigate. It's really like the valley of the shadow of death. And because you're in that place of vulnerability, you know that it's a possibility. It's a possibility. And yet, despite of that, here's what David said. I will fear no evil. He said, I will fear no evil. Why? For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Church, God does not send us through dark valleys with a promise to meet us again on the other side. No, he doesn't do that. No. For David, he didn't believe in that. He said, for you are with me. You are with me. God goes with us every step of the way. Hindi na sabihin sa atin, okay, magkita tayo dun sa end nung ano, ah, nung on the other side of the valley. No. The good shepherd's rod and stuff. You know, God brings that with him. The good shepherd brings that with him. And they bring comfort too. Well, the rod is used to ward up predators and to direct the sheep as they walk. The staff, with its large crook at the end, serves to support the sheep's body when it crosses a dangerous chasm. It's essentially a hook, you know. Church, remember this. When we go through valleys, the Lord goes with us. His staff and his rod brings comfort to us. He protects us and guides us every step of the way. So, with the Good Shepherd, we have utmost satisfaction and tremendous confidence. But there's another thing that we find here. It is this. Marvelous assurance. Let me repeat that. Marvelous assurance. For according to David in verse 5, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Church, we can have marvelous assurance in the presence of the Good Shepherd. Amen? For this assurance of God's goodness and grace comes to us no matter what situations we might find ourselves in. Even in extreme situations, even in the presence of enemies or adversities, God prepares a table for us. Meaning, we can afford to eat in the presence of our enemies. Alam niyo, mga sundalo, pag nasa labanan, walang time kumain ng mga yan. No? Soldiers won't have time to be able to eat in the midst of a battle. Why? Because when you're being attacked, when you're in a battle, adrenaline kicks in and you're in survival mode. You forget your hunger. Ala kang ganang kumain, siyempre ay. You won't be able to eat when you're being shot at. But you know, this table being referred to here, it's not just a typical meal we're talking about. In fact, the message translation of the Bible captures this even better. Because it goes like this. You serve me a six-course dinner right in front of my enemies. So, it's not just a regular meal that you'll have. You'll have a feast. And to feast means you will have joy. For you can only feast when you're happy. Diba? 
So how can you feast when the ads are against you? How can you have joy in the midst of adversities, in the midst of uncertainties? How can we feast in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic? How is that even possible? But you know what? David testifies that it can happen because we are with a good shepherd. We can have this tremendous assurance that things will turn out to be okay in the end. We can have certainty even in imperfect conditions. And in addition to this feast, the Good Shepherd even anoints our heads with oil. You know what? It's hard to be refreshed in the presence of adversities, in the presence of challenges. You'll only get exhausted, but never refreshed. But with God as our shepherd, we will always be refreshed. You don't necessarily need to be in a quiet or peaceful place to be refreshed. For God's ability to refresh you is never diminished even in the midst of adversities or problems. Amen? But you don't only get a feast and get anointed with oil. David says, your cup also overflows. It overflows, friends. One of the things my kids enjoy the most when we go out for fast food, like for example, when we go to McDonald's or Burger King, is the fountain drinks, uh, especially here in the U.S. Why? Uh, because they love coming back to fill their cups. You know, they come back and fill their cups with their favorite fruit punch. <laughs> and it doesn't matter if you paid for a small drink or a large drink. They can always go back and get their fill. Well, being with a good shepherd, it's like that. It's like having your cup filled all the time. You can always come back for more. But it's not just filled, it overflows. Ito'y umaapaw. It means God can provide more than we can ever ask or think of. But the problem is, we don't know that or we forget that. We always or mostly operate from a mindset of scarcity. Especially when we find ourselves in crisis. We say, Kawawa naman ako. Makakalunos na ako man. We go have a pity party forgetting that God is able to give exceedingly more that we can ever ask or think of. We forget that we follow the God of the universe, that we serve the Creator who has all the resources in the universe at His disposal. So I pray that today that God takes you out of that scarcity mindset, for He will surely provide all your needs and even beyond that. Thus, it was for this reason that David was able to conclude the psalm with this great certainty, and that's found in verse 6. He said, Surely, goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Friends, take note of the word, surely. It means he was assured of God's goodness and love all the days of his life. Well, well, let me repeat that. He was assured, David was assured of God's goodness and love all the days of his life. In other words, we get to experience God's goodness and love constantly. Amen? Well, friends, there was once a Shakespearean actor who was known everywhere for his one-man show of recitations from the classics. And he would always end his performance with a dramatic reading of Psalm 23. For it was his favorite text from the Bible. So each night, without exception, as the actor began his recitation of Psalm 23, you know, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, the crowd would listen attentively. And then at the conclusion of the psalm, they would rise in thunderous applause for the actor's incredible ability to bring the verse to life. 
But you know what? One night, just before this famous actor was to recite the psalm, a young man from the audience stood up and said to him, Sir, do you mind if tonight I recite Psalm 23? Well, you know what? The actor was quite taken aback by the unusual request. He relented, knowing that the young man's ability would be no match for his own talent. So with a soft voice, the young man began to recite the words of the psalm. With great simplicity and honesty from his heart. And as he ended, there was no applause. There was no standing ovation just like the other nights with that famous actor. But all that could be heard was the sound of weeping from the audience. The audience had been so moved by the young man's recitation that every eye was full of tears. So amazed by what he had seen, the actor went to the young man and said, Well, I don't understand. I have been performing that for years, but I have never been able to move an audience as you have done tonight. Tell me, what is your secret? You know what? The young man humbly replied, Well, sir, you know the psalm, but I know the shepherd. Friends, that's my prayer for you today. I know you know Psalm 23, but my prayer for you is that you will begin to really know in a special way the shepherd. He is the good shepherd. May you encounter him in a special way today. Let us pray. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you today for reminding us that you are a good shepherd who desires what is good for us. We admit that we are like sheep in need of a shepherd. Help us to be your sheep who will know your voice and follow you. Help us feel today that utmost satisfaction that can only be found in you. Make us lie down in green pastures. Lead us in the still and quiet waters. Even as we face the dark valleys brought about by COVID-19, help us gain that tremendous confidence in you. Even as we face adversities, trials, and tribulations, let us have that marvelous assurance of your goodness, of your love. And may this assurance follow us all the days of our lives. God, even as we pray this, we also remember all of those who are suffering because of this pandemic. We leave up to you those who are grieving because they have lost a loved one or loved ones. Let them know that all will be well. Even now, we remember the Mendigorin family uh, in New Jersey and their extended family back in the Philippines. Let them know that your presence accompanies them even in this valley of their lives. We also leave up to you friends who are sick with COVID-19. We declare your healing touch upon them. We leave up to you Brother Bern Castro in Qatar for his healing and, and many others that are in the thoughts of those who are praying with me at this time. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke COVID-19 in their lungs. Breathe life unto them, O oh God, and banquish away this virus in their bodies. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Amen. Friends, there might be some of you who are watching and you feel the Lord is touching your heart and you feel that you can even see yourself as sheep 
instead you see yourself more like a lost sheep because you live your life separate away from the good shepherd but you know what the good shepherd is seeking you out right now and he's drawing you back to his fold for in John 1:12 John says yet to all who did receive him to all who believe in his name he gave them the right to become children of God. And so, if you haven't really received Him in your life today, today is the day of your salvation. Would you pray this prayer with me? Dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus, who died on the cross to save me from sins. I admit that I am a sinner in need of a Savior. Forgive me from all of my sins. Come into my heart. Be my Savior, be my King. Be the Lord of who I am. And I will never be the same again. In Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, if you sincerely pray that prayer for the first time, know that Christ dwells in you. And as promised in John 1 verse 12, He gave you the right to become His child. Also, please send me a private message. I would love to know more about you and I would be glad to tell you more about next steps on how to begin your walk with Jesus. Also, if you have any prayer requests, please don't hesitate to message me or leave a comment below. Friends, thanks again for tuning in. You go walk with a good shepherd. God bless.